The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Uh, okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. Uh, we have an announcement to make, and that is, you remember on Monday, we had a young man from Naples, Florida on our show named Norman, who calls it to the minute, Winsky, and said the grains were most probably topping. I think he was on the show, uh, uh, and he said that we're probably topping, which we broke about a dollar. And then he said it should bottom sometime around Wednesday. Wednesday is today when we have the super full moon, which is the moon at uh, Zizergy, where the moon, the moon is as close to the Earth as it possibly uh, can be. Now, I think that's very important to remember that, but uh, something we have to, you know, got to give him, you know, kudos when, uh, when he nails it that closely. Now, I posted a chart of the December corn. I sent a video out on this. Last night, saying we got to be buying corn today, folks. Look for an ABCD, and by golly, there was your ABCD right down there at uh, 579. We've already rallied up to 603. So if you happen to be in that, just put your stop at break even. Well, actually, put it in at about uh, so you lock in a couple hundred bucks. But if it's right, it should continue to go, you know, for quite some time is uh, what I would be looking at. Now. The, uh, the one other thing, there's a lot of things happening because of this super full moon today, folks. And one of the other things that we sent out in the uh, video that we sent last night was the fact that we were coming down uh, to some major, major, major support in the uh, E-mini S&P. If I can just find it right in here somewhere. And by golly, there it is. Let's get it up here. And then I've got a really great story to tell you. We've got to get off the ABCDs for just a minute, but there's your ABCD move uh, right there. Uh, we've had a pretty good rally off of the bottom, uh, and so whether if it reverses today, that would really be something, but we'll have to uh, wait and see. Big move today in gold, and mainly that's because of the U.S. dollar and the euro. We're going to be covering that in just a little bit, but now I've got a human interest story. This goes back to Terre Haute, Indiana. My sister called me yesterday and said, you've got to get on the tube and watch your uh, ne my nephew's son, Larry. Uh, he, she has three boy, uh, two boys, Greg and Larry and Christine. And uh, uh, Larry's son is uh, 18 years old at Indiana uh, University, and he's a baseball player, and he's, he's quite good for 18 years old. He's six foot five. Good basketball player, too, but a very good baseball player. He was selected one out of 50 players playing in a uh, a all-star championship thing at the at the Cincinnati Red Stadium for this this past week. And so he had he was scheduled to pitch for several innings um, yesterday. And he just uh, he just did a really great job. He struck out one person each of the innings. Uh, he only threw seven base on uh, seven balls. All the rest of them were strikes. He had all the rest of them were either uh, s small pop-ups or ground balls. He did really good. He had 17 major league scouts give him his card and said, we'd like to talk to you further. So I don't know if it's going to be something like uh, – uh, Kevin Costner, <laughs> I don't know, but I, I have to tell you, if you'll stay, if you'll stay tuned to me uh, tomorrow, I'm going to have something special to show you about baseball and Tara Holt and Tommy John, some memorabilia that my sister was kind enough to send it to me yesterday, because uh, we had a we had a great uh, good time talking to it. But he's very good. But you know, 18 that don't mean anything at all. Folks, something big has happened today with this super full moon. I don't know if you're following it or not. I mean, I've had some people show me some stuff that uh, just literally is, uh, you know, quite amazing if you if you pay close attention to it. Let's take a look here at the U.S. dollar index, just for instance. We, we've been talking about this for a long time. It's not a big deal because we talked about par and the uh, euro and all that other stuff as we've gone on through here. And let's get this up here so we can see it. There's the U.S. dollar index. You can see the 1.618 expansion. Now, this might be just a short-term blip. But by golly, you know, that was a $1,300 move in the euro this morning, folks. That's a big move. Now, 
I wasn't in the Euro. I was in the corn and, you know, looking at a couple other things. But, uh, you know, the golds had a really nice run coming off the bottom. We had made a new low at 1706. So you got to say we've made three lower lows now in that gold. Uh, we did it at first one was at 20, uh, 25, then 20, and then 10, and then today at 6. So there's four lower lows, and it didn't go anywhere other than that. So we've got to pay very, very close attention to it. But let's go back for a second. I wanted to show you the S&P because we watch short-term patterns because they help control the risk. And if you were paying attention this morning, you were watching the Dow Jones keep making new lows. But if you had been watching the E-mini S&P, look what you were seeing here. We got this from our good friends down in Texas. You'll see, there we go, your beautiful 135 pattern coming in just absolutely perfectly. And bada bing, bada boom, it takes off and, you know, continues to go higher. So I think it's important that we got to pay attention to some of these things because uh, this could be a big reversal day, folks. You know, we went down, the, the price objective on the S&P was uh, – uh, 3760. We went down to 3753, I think, at, you know, right before the market opened after the report came out. And uh, then we've had a little bit of a bounce from there. But I have to share something with you. We've only got a couple more minutes before the break. Stan Harley will be our break, but we had today. Stan Harley will be our guest today. Tomorrow, we're going to have uh, Rich Anderson. We're going to be talking about the grains. And then on Friday, we're going to have Paula Douglas will be our guest uh, on Friday. So those are some of the things that we're paying a very, very close attention to. Now, let's just take a quick look here at the Euro this morning because uh, it did uh, some amazing things here. Let's just move it over. Oh, please don't disappear on me. And then, I, oh, is this it? There is what I want to see. Here's the Euro. I just wanted to show you the importance of, uh, shut the front door in just a minute here. Just a minute, just a minute. Hold on, just a minute, just a minute. Got so many things going on today that I can't get all of them done at once. But here is the chart for the Euro. Now, you'll see, uh, again, you know, we were looking at this number par because that's the monthly. Now we've had the best rally we've had in a long time, folks. We've already rallied up through the 61% retracement, and that's our biggest rally. It's even bigger than the one. Well, it's about the same as the one we had back here. But this tells you that that something's happened. Yeah, maybe it just be short term. But if you're trading it short term, look at this. You make a slightly lower low by two pips in the largest traded market in the whole world, and there's no stops there. Hello, operator. You know, give me a break on that one. My goodness, that's a that's a monster move. And so that's what we're paying, you know, very, very close attention to here. In fact, this may be something pretty substantial. We've had gold rally $25 in just a matter of a few hours. That's tell, of course, this market's been a bit oversold, as you can imagine. But that's uh, that's neither here nor there. So let's uh, keep our keep our, uh, you know, weather dry. Now, look, now we already started. Look at the S&Ps coming back. It's up on the day now. Uh, the other one, folks, this is the one, the gift that keeps on giving. I mean, I tell you, I sent this out last night because I didn't think anybody was going to think that we ever had a chance to see this one happen. But uh, this was worked exactly as we had hoped. And uh, boy, it's been a big move. And that is something, it's uh, slippery. And it's also known as Texas tea. Mr. Crude Oil itself, AB equals CD. We'll be right back, 877-927-6648. of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I posted a chart here of the crude oil making the big ABCD pattern down here. We made it early last night down there at the 9479 level. That, that only tells you half the story, folks. After that bottomed, we rallied $3,000, $3 a barrel. Then we came down 78% of that back down to 94, uh, 99. And from there, we went back up another 2000 We've had a $6,000 swing in crude oil, and it's only been open here from market-wise, from what we're watching here, for about five hours. So this is really incredible volatility, and this is where these patterns really help us because uh, they get you on the right side. And when you're wrong, you're on the wrong side. You just get out and don't worry about it. I get a tiny bit of flack today from uh, people that were listening uh, to Norm on Monday because we were talking about this super full moon. Folks, just go Google it. I mean, everybody's talking about it. This is a very big event. I don't know you if you realize this or not, but back in 666, no, 663 BC, there was a dude there in Greece named Pythagoras. Not only did he know the Earth was round, but he knew that the distance between the Earth and the moon was 255,000 miles. He did that through the formulas that are famous for him now. But that's how smart the dude was. He was the first man ever to use the square roots of numbers. The problem was so many people were jealous of him that he had to go underground and became a secret society. Supposedly, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot to be known about him. There's only a few little tiny sculptures, no paintings of him. Uh, and so it's pretty difficult to get an idea of what he looked like. But uh, he was one smart dude. Albert Einstein said, they asked him who were the five smartest people to ever walk on the planet. And he said, oh, without doubt, he said, number one was Pythagoras. He said, there was God. And there was man, and in between was Pythagoras. And he said, beside that, we had Isaac Newton, and we had uh, Galileo, and, of course, myself. 
anyway, those are the some of the things that I remember just uh, listening to some of the things that Einstein said. And of course, he was one smart dude. Many people for years couldn't figure out the theory of relativity, but now it's standard operating procedures in uh, some of these things that we're watching here uh, in the news all the time. Now, I have to get back to Bart Leone, okay? If you remember, we had Jimmy Bart back here yesterday talking to us about this pattern. Um, I, this may or may not mean anything, folks, but to me, it's a it's something that's interesting. That's all I can tell you. If you take a look at this, this is the 382 in the weekly. That's the weekly Apple. Now, we get above this number up in here. We get above that. That's going to be bullish, folks, because this thing is so – Apple is such a widely held stock. You know, you know, basically, you know, the Dow Jones, these are price-weighted. They're not cap-weighted. So it's a very expensive stock. So it's not the most expensive in there. But uh, Goldman Sachs is more expensive, and I think – I don't even remember what the other ones were. But anyway, it's very important. Look, look what happened. We talked about this number. Now, look at the right side of that where the number says the 382 – is 148.23. Okay, now all I'm going to do now is I did this yesterday because Bart asked me to take a look at it, and I says, well, it can't be that much. But anyway, just to, just to show you, uh, I was shocked. And I got a little bit of, you know, people said, you know, what is all this stuff about solar time and all this stuff? Folks, I don't know solar time from... <laughs> Timex. All I do is I watch little ABCDs, and when they happen, you know, that's great. You know, some of these guys out there, they do some fabulous work. It's a little over my pay grade, but I don't need a pay grade when I'm looking at ABCD. That's as simple as simple as it, what it can be. You throw a couple of ratios, put it on a stove for a few minutes, you can cook yourself a meal, for God's sake. Look at this, folks. On Friday, we hit... 147.99 okay now it was supposed to go to 148.23 and as you can see the high yesterday was 148.44 19 uh, 21 ticks 21 cents higher than it was supposed to be so we're not going to use that anymore it's got to hit 148.23 or you got to consider that's a no-go simple as that you got to have accuracy these things. Otherwise, it's just not going to do any good. And if you believe that, I still have two or three shares of the Brooklyn Bridge that are be available for purchase at the end of the show. I do not know if this is a major bottom in the euro or not, but I have to assume that it is. Look at gold, folks. We've already rallied $40 today. That's the biggest rally we've had since a long time. And where is it coming? Right on this cycle that Norm talked about. Tim Boss talked about it too last Friday. But Norm was really, you know, hammering away at it on Monday. And it was good because it's all over Google. And it sure does it mean anything. I don't know. All I know is it's a time count. You know, it's another full moon to new moon, 14 days. Take a look at them. Prove it to yourself. Sure, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But that's the bottom line is nothing's going to work all the time. Now, let me give you a, a little heads up here of what I was watching this morning because when these patterns fail, they tell you a whole lot. So let me get this up here to show you. We were watching the E-mini here this morning in the S&P because we assumed that it was going to have a big move down, which we already showed you what the target was. There, your target, you remember on that big hourly chart, that target came in at 1760. You notice that we rallied right up here to uh, 1790 at the, what am I talking about, 17, 3790. And then we backed off substantially. And then we had this 135 pattern that we posted uh, from our good friend Jonathan down in Texas. There was the 135 pattern. And from there, bada bing, bada boom, we went up and we're completing that ABCD of that one right now. So those are some of the things that you want to be watching as you're looking at them. Because what will happen is if you're not aware of where these patterns are short term uh, and you want to quantify your risk, the only way you can do it, folks, is move down to a 15-minute chart. That's the only way I could do it. Because at that point, have it, look at that perfect 382, and it drops 20. It drops 20 handles. That's a thousand dollars, and then it makes a 61% retracement of the low. And while this is happening, while this is happening, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is moving down, making new lows on the day. The Nasdaq's not doing it. Nope. Neither is the S&P. Nope. Neither is the Russell. It was only that. So you had to pay attention. And once that held. 
bada bing, bada boom. This has got a chance to be a, I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but if it's got a chance to be a really big day in the stock market, if this thing reversed all of this, wow, that would really be something. I don't know whether it can or not. All I can say is if it could, that'll really be something. On the second hand of this, if we go below this number now at uh, 3755 in the E-mini S&P, then boy, that means uh, – there's trouble in River City, and there's going to be a whole lot of uh, selling coming in. The selling's going to come in. Whether it comes in today or not, uh, I'm not sure. But we hit that hit those numbers right on the time, and it's important that we watch to see, you know, how they uh, how they unfold, and then we'll keep a you know a close eye on you know what they're as we're watching some of those. But uh, it's uh, very interesting. We still well the S and P's have backed off again uh, from that level, so we'll we'll keep a, uh, a close eye on that. As we as we look at these, we've got Norm Winsky coming up uh, for the day. I wanted to share this with you a little earlier because we were watching the bond market uh, really closely here this morning because of the move. And we'll have Stan Harley on the line here in just a minute, folks. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Stan Harley of the Harley Stock Market Letter on the line today. Stan, how are you doing today, my friend? I am just doing awesome, Larry. Just awesome. This is good to hear. Well, Mr. Bear, you've been certainly right for a long time now. And tell us uh, what you're looking at here in the stock market. You start out with the monthly uh, S&P? Um, abs absolutely. I brought uh, four charts here today. Okay. Um, the first one is a chart of the 
monthly S&P 500. And get it up here on the screen. There we go. Um, what I've shown here, Larry, is a pattern that has defined all of the major highs going back for decades. Um, the, uh, the pattern suggests that there's about an 84 month, call it a seven year cycle, in the uh, pattern of peaks. Um, and the latest one came in right on the mark. Um, and indeed, if you go back, say, to the January 1973 high, and you add seven times 84 months, that's 343 months, exactly 49 years, the regression analysis lines up with exactly January 2022. So uh, um, it's my uh, fervent belief that we've seen yet another peak in this seven-year cycle series, and, and the trend is, is, is down. Okay, boy, that certainly makes a lot of sense. Now, the next one we're going to bring up here is the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and we have a, a question from one of our listeners. And does Stan Harley, since you're an old time, well, not an old timer, you're a young timer. <laughs> anyway, do you do anything with the old stuff with uh, uh, Richard Russell, you know, the Dow theory and stuff with the transportations? Do you still think that has makes merit? Even we have this this uh, big society that has everything technical now. What's your feeling on that, Stan? Well, you know, Richard Russell was uh, a strong proponent of the Dow theory. So he would look at the Dow industrials and compare that to, say, the Dow transports and look for either confirmations or non-confirmations. Um, I believe in the premise. I take it a step further. I look at what I call the big five. Um, so I don't just look at the Dow Industrials and the Dow Transports, but in addition to that, I look at the S&P 500, the NASDAQ mm -hmm. Composite, and the New York Composite. So I look at the interplay among all five of those benchmark indices and look for either confirmations or non-confirmations. And that, that gives me clues as to whether or not the trend is uh, intact or uh, if I start seeing divergences at a high, for example. Um, then it tells me this thing is running out of juice. We had that last year. First of all, the, uh, the Dow Transports peaked out in early November. Then in later November, the NASDAQ Composite peaked on November 22nd. January 4th, the S&P topped out. January 5th, the Dow topped out. And the last component among the big five was the New York Composite. It peaked out on January 13th. And then, poof, that was it. That's very, oh. very common topping evolution. So I look at the interplay among those five and watch for them to peak out at different points in the, in the measured move. Wow, that's really, uh, really good, Stan, when you go through all those. So you do, the answer to that question is yes, you do look at all three of the transports, uh, transports utilities, and the uh, uh, industrials. So it gives you a rough idea of what's happening. Not so much the utilities, but the New York Composite and the NASDAQ. Uh, okay. and the S&P. Something that Richard Russell, I don't believe, focused too much on. Yeah. But one other question, Stan, and that is, do you look at the, um, what's the, uh, my goodness, the guy just st stopped it to me, the, uh, what the what's the really big one that, ever, uh, value line. Do you look at the value line uh, at all? Because that's supposed to be the broadest of all the indices, and I, I don't look at it at all. I haven't looked at it in 30 years. Um, Larry, I'm in your camp. I haven't looked at it in 30 years either. I, yeah. I like the New York composite. Yes, um, yes. The NYA, you and I back in the day used to trade the knife, yep. which yep. was the, the, the greatest uh, stock market index to trade. Yes, um, it was. And the margins were low compared to the S&P, and you got the same movement. <laughs> yes. Why that went away, I don't know. But, uh, no, I look at the New York composite, which is a... Uh. Uh, uh, a measure of all of the stocks traded on the New York Stock Exchange, not just the top 30 or the top 500. Okay. All right. And we're not well in this uh, industrial chart now. We can see that it's certainly in the long term downtrend. Uh, what, it, is, what is, it is indeed. And yeah. something to uh, take note of is look with your eye at the number 30,000. And uh, we broke below that in mid June. We're a little bit above that today. Um, but as I'm going to show here in the next chart, I expect this little counter trend move we're in right now to exhaust its rocket fuel later next week. And I fully expect to see the Dow Industrials back below the 30,000 mile marker here in, in short order. Is and there. I, we, uh, we're looking up. Bring, at these, 
we'll be looking up at these levels with a telescope. <laughs> okay, this is my next question. How far down are we going to have to use a telescope to see where we are? Where do you think the bottom's going to be here on this next swing stand? Yeah, it's difficult to gauge price, but I think uh, the Dow will be in the mid 20s. So 25,000 ish. Uh huh. Uh, okay. And, and early fall. And I have some pretty good time, uh, time parameters on that that I'm going to show here in this next chart. Okay, this is what we're watching now in the SPX. Uh, the, uh, one other question that uh, someone just Skyped me, and that is, do you see a potential for a crash-type scenario given everything that's going on in the world with COVID and the rest of the stuff, politics, whatever? It, Larry, I – no. When yeah, I think good, of crash, good in answer, Stan. 1987, <laughs> when it was over and done within a couple of days, um, no, I see this as more of a meat grinder and down. Yeah. Uh, the best analogy I think would be 1973-74, um, where the market uh, took a year and a half to almost two years uh, to uh, to go from high to low. I see something similar evolving here, uh, January 73. It's, you know, that was a seven-year cycle peak, as I showed earlier. Uh, the Dow went from basically 1,000 down to 500 through that span of time, and it stair-stepped its way down. The 1974 period and the 2022 time period do look very similar. Uh, we had a low in June. We had to move up from there, and then we made two plump-down lows, one in October of that year for the S&P bottom, the first week in October, and then... On December the 9th of 74, the Dow made a lower low. And I'm looking for essentially the same pattern in 2022. Uh, more coincidental than anything. Okay, that's really good. I I see, I, I, people ask me about the crash. I said, don't even think about that stuff. They happen once every 30, 40 years. Yeah, you might get it, you might not, but yeah. it's not worth thinking about. All it does is waste you a lot of energy. And uh, from my perspective, it's wasted energy, but you know, totally. that's neither... That's neither here nor there. I have, uh, before we, uh, we have another chart that we want to uh, share with you, Stan, after we come back for the break. But I have one other question that someone's asked. And you've, you've answered it before, but since this person is new, what is the best book to start to look at, the one or two books, to understand some of the cycle stuff that you work on? Uh, the work that I do is my own. So there really is no okay. book. I, I haven't... Okay. Uh, I'm not plagiarizing anybody here. Um, there are a number of books out there on cycles. Um, they're kind of just textbook stuff. Um, but what you see, what I share with you and the viewers here is my own material, my own, okay. the product of my own original research, and you're not going to find it in any book anywhere. Yeah. Well, we, we started looking at uh, Hearst's book, Profit, Magic, and Stock Transaction Timing, back in 72. Okay. But, uh, was that 1872 or 1972? I can never remember. Hey, listen, <laughs> we'll be right back with Stan Harley, folks, the Harley Stock Market Letter. Stay tuned, please. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstat has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro Dollar, Pound Dollar, Aussie Dollar dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. 
David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, folks, we're back speaking with uh, Stan Harley of the Harley Stock Market Letter. Stan, uh, we're looking at mortgage rates, it looks like, and I think they're going higher, it looks like, from this chart. Uh, well, yes, and if we could, I'd like to go back to the prior chart. Oh, sure, uh, sure, sure. We yeah, can do we that. We Just one second. It doesn't... Uh, yeah. I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I can get it up here in just a minute. This is the SPX. Let me get it back up here. And then we'll be able to look at it. And there we go. I was just trying to. Okay. Yes, and there, it is. there you go. I the monitor. Um, very interesting tactical information available to us here, uh, Larry, I believe. Um, okay. What I've done, and I found this just by hunting and pecking and just by accident. Um, I uh, put uh, the dominant Fibonacci ratios of 0 0.146, 236, 382, 618, and so on, uh, over the chart of the S&P 500. And I put the zero point on November 22nd, which happens to be where the NASDAQ peaked out. And then just through trial and error, I found out that all of the peaks on the daily chart, every single one without exception, is lined up with a major Fibonacci ratio. And you and I have been in the biz for a long time. That's not an accident. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and then I plugged all of the data points into a spreadsheet. I did what's called, what, what is called a regression analysis, which finds the best math mathematical fit to the data series. And uh, we have a very valid cycle here. Uh, the analysis then points to the next recurrence in the pattern at the 0.764 level. And that should occur right around July 22nd with a standard deviation of about three days, three trading days. So what's that? What does that mean? That means we should expect a kind of a continued chop shop here uh, with the potential for a higher high somewhere in the vicinity of later next week. And then once that occurs, then the downtrend uh, should, I believe, should resume and we should break the June 17th lows. And as I said, I think we're going to be down in the mid 20s uh, in the blink of an eye. Wow. wow, that's going to be a surprise to a lot of people, I think. Uh, Stan, we have uh, one other question. Uh, what, do, you, do you want to go back to the uh, one on the um, mortgage the now? Mortgage. The 30-year mortgage? Yeah, let's yeah. get that up here so we can take a look at it. I heard Tom Tommy O'Brien today on the show about the cost that's involved now the last five or six months of buying a house at a higher price and then paying you know, instead of playing a two and a half percent mortgage, you're playing four and a half or five, and boy, that that's a that's a big hickey. That's going to put a screeching halt to that market. I at least it has in the past. So, what are you looking at here, Stan? 
Well, yes. And then just as a backdrop, and I've, I've shared this with you and the viewers in the past, my work with the Case of Schiller series of home price indices. And for years, I've been suggesting November 2022, uh, plus or minus about uh, two to three months, we should see a peak in home prices nationwide. And I still believe that will be the case. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, something that is also interesting is home, uh, home mortgage rates have just gone through the roof lately. And yeah. interestingly, even though they peaked or bottomed two years ago, um, that did not kill off the case Schiller prices just yet. There's a lag effect that goes on with that. Uh, now, here is the mortgage rate. This is current right through the present time frame. Um, this is a weekly chart going back uh, oh. about 10 years. And what I've done here, just like what I did with the S&P 500 chart on the prior page, through just an iterative process, overlaid my Fibonacci grid line, uh, 0 0.146, 2.36, 3.82, 618, and so forth. And then just through an iterative process, found out that uh, it lines up with today. Uh, wow. And you can see every single important Fibonacci ratio has lined up with uh, all of the pivotal turns, with one exception, that was the 0.146. But every other one is lined up with a, an important pivotal turn. What does that mean? It means interest rates are probably peaking right in here. And mm -hmm. uh, so I wouldn't panic. Um, I would look for a pullback that will probably last for some period of time. That doesn't change my view that the long-term trend is now up. What it means is we've just re we've just hit a high point and we're going to stall out here for mm -hmm. probably a period of a few months. Um, wouldn't surprise me to see uh, rates pull back below the uh, the high level of late 2018. Um, that would put us down around below 4.9. Do some chop shop either side of that range for a while and then uh, mm -hmm. rates I believe will resume the uptrend. Of course, that will, this will ultimately kill off the home price market, but the cyclical functions already had that forecasted for, for later this no November in my work. Wow. These are fabulous charts, Stan. I really want to thank you for being our guest today. We're going to have you on again soon. I apologize for screwing up the times the last couple of times, but I was a little under the weather with that uh, voice thing. I, had, I lost my voice for about a week, and the boy, it was, uh, it was pretty tough, so I wasn't able to be on the show. But we'll have you on again in a couple of weeks. So can you tell the folks how they could reach you if they'd like to see these charts or uh, how, if you want to subscribe to your letter? What's the best way to do this? Yeah, they can uh, log on to my website. Uh, they may, my contact info is there. Uh, there's a little bug right now with the, with the link uh, that allows one to subscribe, but they can find my email address and or phone number and they can reach me there. Okay, great. Listen, thanks for joining us. Good luck. Stay safe and be on the green side of the grass every day, my friend. My pleasure. Thank you so much. You bet. Thank you, Stan. Known Stan for a long time, way over 40 years, and boy, he has done his homework and he does a great job. Okay, let's take a quick look at some of these markets, just uh, what's going on here. We've got a break coming up here in another two minutes, but uh, I wanted to uh, talk to us about this, uh, the fact that that euro, what it did today, folks, I posted it earlier and what happened today is extremely important. I'm going to put it up here because from, from you know, I, I look at patterns and numbers, folks. When the patterns and numbers line up, I have a pretty good idea of what the heck I'm doing. And if I can't find it, then I know something's wrong. But if you take a look here at the euro, and I did this just, what, an hour, well, it's, I've been on 450 minutes ago. So I'll get it up here and we'll put it up here again because it stopped right there, right at the 61% retracement. You'll see it. There it is. That was a 61% retracement of the high we made, uh, you know, five days ago. Now, remember, this is what's important, because if you take the newsletter, you'll see that this is a monthly uh, ABCD there at par. And we've, we've been below par twice. We were here a, a day or so ago, and here we are again. We took it out by another pip today. And that that other pip today is when it took it out by one pip, the largest traded stock or the largest traded thing in the whole world. I mean, nothing even comes close to the amount of money that, well, except for the money market funds, it, it, that trades on a, on a legitimate basis is the, the foreign exchange of the euro versus the U.S. dollar. It is huge. A trillion dollars a day, folks. And that that's, uh, you know, big time money. But we could be looking at a major, major number here. Now, we did get a $40 rally in the uh, gold and we backed off a little bit uh, not much yet but uh, you know we've got some 
really important cycle stuff that was coming in today. And if these things fail on these days like this, boy, that's really telling you a lot. All I can tell you about this lunar cycle, it was the most important thing that Frank Tauscher, the Super Traders Almanac, the best trader that I ever met, including Amos Hostetter, he loved it. We'll be right back, 877-927-6648. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. back folks i posted the chart the long-term monthly and the number of times you see me look at a monthly chart you can count on one hand you'll notice here way back here on the left there when we were down at the bottom that's when my grandson chase was born we were trading uh, about par excuse me, let's try that again it was trading around 84 from 84 we went up to 160 and now we're back to par again that's a beautiful abcd pattern folks it's on a monthly basis it just kicked it out twice now this week We've had a, a thousand, well, well over a thousand dollar rally today, considerably more. And now what you want to do is to watch what happens next. This is a major cycle bottom that we have here today. Uh, Tim Boss talked about it. Norm, Norm Winsky talked about it. Had him on as guest last week. And by golly, that's been the right way to look at it. But you know, this might only be a cycle that lasts two or three days, and then it goes down from there.
So just remember, folks, uh, it's not about how much money you make. It's how much money you don't lose. That's a key to doing it. This is why the patterns are important, folks, not whether they, they work or whether they don't work. They tell you where you are is how much risk you have. Because if you start breaking the numbers, they start going considerably beyond par. In other words, 30, 40 dollars. 30, 40 pips, roughly 400 bucks, you know that it's not working. It either works right on the money, like it did in crude oil and gold and, and the, uh, uh, not gold, crude oil and the corn today, uh, absolutely perfect. And uh, e the, the stock market, absolutely perfect. But if they don't work, they're going to go the other way. It's that simple. Because when the patterns fail, they're going to go the other way. There's no other reason to even think anything differently. Now, tomorrow we're going to have Rich Anderson. He's going to be talking to us about the grains. We're going to go over wheat, soybeans, soybean oil, corn, and uh, we're going to just uh, and soybean meal. You get a rough idea of where we stand and, and with weather coming in and we're in the midst of a we have to have bumper crops, folks, because if we don't, we're in big trouble. It's not just what's going on in Ukraine with the wheat and corn and stuff that's over there, but the whole world because many of these countries are already in famine conditions. We'll see you on the flip side tomorrow. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. Mm -hmm.